Hi guys, this is Simeon from Swedish Homestead. Welcome to the Swedish Homestead channel. I'm standing here in our orchard that was a test. We planted this orchard three years ago and I want to share with you how we did it, the results, um, what we can observe, what has been good, what has been bad, all of that. Plus, I'm going to be pruning a tree, but the pruning itself and where I go through the equipment that I use and why I use it will be in the next video. This video will be about the orchard, the trees, and the covering. So this orchard has pear trees and apple trees, and further down there is actually one plum tree, which we might move or cut down and plant somewhere else because it doesn't really fit in but it has been growing for, th for three seasons. And we have had some older apple trees and cherry trees here on the property, but we are three families and we really wanted to plant enough trees that we could store the apples in a walk-in cooler for most part of the year. We would like to eat fresh pears and apples all winter long. And if you store them just a couple degrees above freezing, that is fine. Let me show you how we planted this, what we were thinking, and the results so far. Now when we started this orchard, we had no money. So we didn't go and buy the best and most expensive trees. Here in Sweden, traditionally, the trees are being sold in the spring for planting. Um, other parts I know where I grew up, you did it in the fall. But we did it in the fall here as well because we bought the trees that were left over that had a bad shape that nobody else wanted to have. We got them for like 70 to 90% cheaper. And so th that is where we came from. Now this was just lawn. Actually this was a soccer field where just guests and we on the farm used to play soccer and have fun. So it was packed dirt, packed ground. It wasn't very good in any way. It hadn't been grazed or anything, no manure. We had just mowed it to keep it short for the soccer. And from all the people playing on it, it was quite packed ground. So that was where we started off. Now, I have been working with landscaping and um, in town we've planted hedges and all of that. And my experience has always been that if you dig a big hole like the books say and you put compost and good soil in there and plant that bush in there. Um, depending on what kind of soil you have, the water can actually stand in there like in a bathtub. The roots can rot. Um, you create an unnatural environment for that tree. The tree's roots grow to the border of that hole where there's all of a sudden clay or something else and the tree thinks, wow, this is not the soil that I thought I was growing in and it takes a long time for these trees to establish. What we did here is we just dug a hole big enough to fit the roots in and put the tree in there and then we came and hauled in wood chip from our own forest that we chipped here on the farm and we covered the whole thing 40 centimeters deep. Now that was raw wood chips and so uh, that killed all the weeds. Nothing grew through like you can see. No weeds came through because it was so thick now, since, those, th since then, it has been three years ago, and this whole, um, this, this whole covering has gone down to about five to 10 centimeters. That is um, two to four inches. That's how much it has composted. Now, last year we grew garlic between the trees here. In, in the ground, we just pushed it in the wood chips, and we have done this again this year. We have never applied compost or manure or anything here. Now, when we bought these trees, they were between 15 and 20 centimeters, uh, millimeters thick. That's less than an inch. And it, like I said, it has been three years. Now, let me measure this tree here in diameter um, after just three seasons of growing here. Now we are at 77 millimeters. So let's just say this tree was an inch when we bought it. Now it is, um, so 25 millimeters. Now it is 77 millimeters, which is three inches. That, I think that's quite impressive. Now, 
let me show you we have seen a difference of where we planted the trees if they were in the middle of the covering roots had lots of room to spread out or on the side of the orchard um, that you can see the difference now here you can see this tree that I just measured and then you have this tree that's also very nice and then if we go over here and this tree it's a pear tree obviously and um, it has gotten some damage from some bunnies that I've eaten from it but it's much thinner also this apple tree here it's also standing in the grass we didn't have enough covering to cover it all the way it's much thinner so this is one thing that we have observed now the covering has just been amazing right now the top is frozen even though we are having a crazy mild winter it's ridicul ridiculous but the ground is frozen but underneath there's just so much activity you see worms and everything and then the ground is just incredibly soft when i push the covering away i can take my finger and where it was hard and compacted ground before i can just put my finger straight into the ground it's always moist and the apples we had here last year now this is important the first year half of these trees were already bearing fruit the first year after planting this tree was packed with fruit last year the apples were so heavy that this whole tree leaned over to the left can you, you can see this this tree was straight in the spring and it just leaned over because of the weight of the fruit now that is something we'll have to try to take care of now when we prune it. I will be pruning this tree. It'll be in the next video. Now with the system we have experienced an incredible growth on this whole orchard, um, especially with the trees that have been um, planted in the middle of the covering and just had the roots have just had ro uh, room to go crazy in all kinds of directions. <laughs> the ground is so soft, so moist. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, this this composting covering is constantly adding nutrition, um, fungi growing, and and all of that just being added to um, the tree, and which there, there are mushrooms growing in these wood chips. So, a, as you see this, um, I'm just gonna take this off here right now. This was the growth from this past year. Now. I would think this is about 60 centimeters and we have in many places there's more more than that let me go over here this one is even longer this is the growth from just the past year while there were huge apples on there you could have gone in the late summer when the apples were growing and cut away a lot of this already we didn't have the time, we were too busy. It would have helped the apples even more to grow. But this is the growth that we have experienced here. It's incredible. And it's not just this tree. Um, this is the tree that has established the best, but if we turn the camera here, you can see this tree has grown really, really well as well. Our biggest challenge with this whole no dick system both in the orchard and in the garden has been the borders. This covering compost and it provides an incredible condition for plants to grow in and it's so loose and fluffy that what we have noticed is that we have lost between 50 to 100 centimeters that's two to three feet a year by weeds growing in from the side both in our no dig gardening system and here in the orchard so what do we do to make a border around our garden and our orchard. We don't know yet what is a cheap and effective way for us to do that. There are these metals that you can put there. We don't want to use pressure treated wood because it releases poisons. There's oak, but it's very expensive. Um, we don't really know how we will do this in the future. We have thought of chicken tunnels where the chickens border the garden and scratch through there all the time. but we are still thinking. If you have an idea, please leave a comment and, and share your idea. I will definitely read those. But this is the big challenge that we have had here. Otherwise, we've just been blown away by the system. And um, 
it works great. We can now actually grow vegetables between the trees. We do not have to dig, we won't damage the roots or anything. Now we want to extend the orchard downwards. Um, if I had the money, I would do it all the way down to the old blacksmith. You see there, um, we planted some fruit trees and they are only a year younger, these two are, um, than the other trees. And you see the difference in growth. I mean, they're just tiny. They were not covered at all. Grass has grown up there. We didn't have the time or to make more covering. We didn't have the covering at hand. That's the big problem if you cover it 40 centimeters thick. You lack covering material fairly quickly. So we have to take this um, as we go. Another thing that we had to do because of bunnies coming in, eating off the bark, we had to put um, these things around the tree to protect them. Um, that seemed to have helped. I would actually like, because of deer, I would like to put a fence around here, but that's also very expensive. Let me just show you here real quick. We have had this pear tree. It had amazing pears on it and the bunnies came in and you see here it's just damaged. They, they ate a whole bunch of the tree. Now it's actually growing and trying to cover it. There was only a little bit of the bark left, but the tree actually recovered. So um, I'm really glad it survived because it has ama amazing pears on it. Um, we try to use varieties that grow well in our climate, that um, can handle this. And, and we're testing a lot there with different varieties just because um, the, there are so many local small microclimates here. We have the peninsula with the lake, which means a little warmer in the fall, a little colder in the spring when the ice is frozen, but we'll see. Um, it's a lot of testing. We will keep you updated on this channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video about me sharing about our orchard, how we did it and the growth. I hope to be able to show you when it flowers. I hope we will have a good spring actually where the frost doesn't come late. We can have frost here till the beginning of June or middle of June sometimes, it's quite crazy. We'll almost live at 58 degrees north or uh, 59 degrees north. And, and um, even though we have a mild climate uh, comparable because of the Gulf Stream, we still can have frost to mid summers at times. So um, I can't wait to show you how this will look in the spring but i hope you enjoyed this stay tuned for a pruning video where i will share with you what tools i use you might have seen it already but i will share more specifically and um, how we prune our trees i will see you in the next video bye bye